rolling sound part. Here we go. Three. Three. One point six seven. And starting with right action. Hey everybody, this is uh, Tom Provost, and welcome to our inaugural <laughs> online uh, Lone Star Film Festival. It's really great to have you. I'm a filmmaker and a graduate professor in Los Angeles. I teach at Pepperdine, direct movies, and I'm really excited to bring you today the two filmmakers who did one of my favorite films in the festival, Nowhere. So let me introduce, and tell you what, guys, you just uh, say who you are and what you did on the movie, and we'll dive in, okay? So I'm David Salazar. I'm one of the co-writers and directors and producers on the film. I'm Francisco Salazar, one of the co-writers, co-directors, and co-producers of the film. So what's your relation? Well, we're brothers. Brothers, okay, that's what I was getting at. So <laughs> our, <laughs> I have a lot of questions about writing, directing, brothers all together, but we'll get to that. And I, I hope we get a little drama. I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> I, I have a brother and there's no, absolutely no way my brother and I could write and direct film together. We would both be dead by now. So uh, tell me a little bit first about um, where did the idea for the movie come from? You wrote it together. Like what made you two sit down and say, Hey, I want to write, we want to write this movie. So in 2012, we wrote a feature film. We went into pre-production and unfortunately the project never came to fruition. Um, around 2013, we kind of realized we needed to reboot. So my brother and I kind of started working on a couple of different ideas. It was a very long process, a couple of years writing, a couple of different scripts. Uh, we actually split up, did our own little projects. Um, I kind of started focusing a lot more on on scripts about immigration and Latin American identity in the US. And, and then I started writing about an LGBT uh, story. And we kind of figured that both the ideas were coming like along, but they weren't solid. And we always wanted to bring the Latin American and the immigration portion of the, the film. So we decided to put together and unite the two stories. And that's how it basically started to evolve and create the story that came about. Yeah, and that was around 2016. And from there, I think that entire year was dedicated to writing the screenplay, refining it, and just kind of getting to a point where we really felt that we were telling the stories that we wanted within this one movie. And in terms of all these stories, uh, did you go out and interview people? Did you have friends who experienced things like this? How much did you kind of come up from a filmmaker's imagination? Uh, tell me about that process a little bit. So, I mean, some of the, the film is part of our own personal stories, our own personal relationships, our own personal journeys. And there were also portions like, for example, the, the whole idea of, of a student visa. We, ha we, we went to school with, a, we went to our master's degrees with a lot of immigrants and a lot of people who were coming in as just as foreign students. And they wanted to stay in the country. And we had a friend, he was from Colombia and he wanted to stay in this country. And he told us a lot about the challenges that he was facing um, with, you know, he had done, he had done his, uh, he had done his graduate degree. He started doing some training. Um, but then he faced, you know, a situation where he couldn't find a job that could keep him. And so he started telling about all the options that were available for him. And so we kind of just took a lot of that and put it into the story. Gotcha. Very cool. Um, one of the many things I loved about the movie is that while, yes, it deals with these issues you're discussing, there are a lot of movies that come out of Hollywood that are very specifically issue movies and that's all they are. And they tend to be kind of polemic. One of the things I loved here is that it's a very human story that doesn't feel like an issue movie because you care so deeply about the characters in the movie. Like that's what I care about. And uh, the issue stuff is kind of almost more, I mean, it's forefront, but it's ancillary because I'm just so involved in these guys' story. Uh, did you think a lot about that or the type of story you wanted to tell as you were working on it? Yeah, we definitely, I mean, we, we, I mean, obviously all of these things come to the forefront. You're constantly thinking about it. But I think when we were writing the movie, and I think that's one of the things that really came to the fore because originally the, the aspect of, um, for those who have not seen the movie, Sebastian um, marrying off the one for his green card, that actually became a much bigger thing. We had another relationship with other characters in the story. And it got to a point where we just felt like it was too much about that. And what we really wanted to focus on was these two, um, these two people in a relationship who are at the crossroads in their lives, who are dealing with their own individual personal issues, 
And we felt like we needed to kind of hone in on that, that we need to really kind of focus. For example, with Adrian's story, like he's a guy who likes having control over everything in his life, you know? That's kind of like what he based everything around. And suddenly when he starts losing that control, he's, we start to see those faults and those cracks in his personality and in the challenges that he has in dealing with his own fears. And that kind of really became central to driving the story and finding, you know, this theme of identity that we wanted to kind of layer on, on different levels. Like I said, uh, identity in terms of his sexuality, identity in terms of his nationality, identity in terms of, you know, professional life. And all those things kind of just started to coalesce. Yeah. More. Oh, that, yeah, that's great. Uh, and it works beautifully. Yeah. I mean, all right. So let's get to brothers. So, um, <laughs> Like, so I'm a director and there's no way I could direct with somebody else. Cause like, I'm very opinionated and I want things exactly how I like them. So talk a little bit about both writing and directing. I'm curious, do you divide things up? Like I know the Coen brothers and people like that. This person does this, works with the actors. This person does the composition. How do you do it? So let's talk about writing first. I think our process has changed a lot. Yeah, I mean, I think we definitely like to write together. We like to be able to be in the same, in the same room together, but because we're no longer living together, we we um, we, we try to, um, you know, work on scenes, and then Dave goes in and he looks at the scenes, I look at the scenes, I work on the dialogue, we work on the structure of it. Um, but I think when we can be together, I think we get so much more done, and we, we can really, like, you know, focus a lot into the characters, um, yeah, I mean, writing, we, we love to write together. I think that it's always been something where we benefit the most from it. Um, and in terms of directing, I, I think it's evolved, you know? I think depending on, I don't necessarily think that one of us does one specific thing on set. I, I mean, mean I, we're definitely uh, better at certain things. I know that when, I don't, for this film, Dave did a lot of the producing uh, job because he was, in, he was in Colombia for six months doing pre-production and I was in, New York doing pre-production for the New York stuff. So we were we were in separate diff we were in separate places and so we were doing different types of jobs. But I mean I love to do the I, I love working with a, the producer. I love working with the art director and with the, the costume design. I, I love those aspects of, of it. I mean and I guess I feel very comfortable working with the actors. Not that I mean we both we obviously work. communicate with them. I think maybe on this film in particular I might have taken a little bit of a lead in certain moments with certain scenes. Um, but you know, we kind of, I mean, we kind of just, I think we both feel it out and we kind of we understand who has, who's feeling the moment and we just kind of let that person go. I mean, we, we have, we've always been working together. We actually have a history as musicians together. I played a lot of he played the cello and I think that's where our first collaboration in the artistic world came about. So I think when you're a musician and you're kind of in a situation where you have to listen to each other and feel each other's you know, intention and movement and, and energy. I think that when you're on set doing that kind of work as filmmakers, I think we feel the energies and we know like in this moment, he has a really good sense of what the scene should be. So I'm going to let him drive, you know, and sometimes it's the other way around. And let it flow. I mean, there were certain scenes where I know that they they were sitting in a certain way. And then I, I looked at certain things and I said, they should try this. And then they would do the same thing. We did other scenes and he said, try this. And I mean, so we, 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 we let things flow and we also, when we don't feel feel it as well, we're 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 also checking on it. We're checking on each other. Yeah. Gotcha. So you were telling me you shot for thirty four days. Yes. Okay. So like I did a, a a classic low budget movie that I directed and wrote that was one location, five actors, right? And it was mm -hmm. still so stressful. Mm -hmm. I was amazed by how many locations and how many actors you have in this. I mean, it's a pretty scopey movie for like a not you know an, an independent film. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that. How I mean, you pull that off? And you know what's funny? We tried to write it uh, so that it was as small scope as possible. I think we really wanted to center it on their apartment as much as possible. But then, of course, there's so many other things going on outside of it. That you obviously have to kind of like find little locations here and there. Um, I don't know. I mean, to be fair, I think we have to really uh, credit our entire crew because our crew really just knocked it out of the park when it came to finding the locations and trying to find sets and trying to find these things. My, our family also helped, you know, the, some of the scenes, some of the scenes were shot in our family apartment. Some of our, uh, were shot in some of our family friends, the offices and restaurants. So we really, and then we got really lucky because there was a lot of people who were really interested in just 
us going there and shooting. So it, it was a very it was a very interesting uh, shoot two different countries, of course, and that was also one of the toughest things because we also had to work around visas and trying to make sure that people could get to the country and go back. So it, that was also tough as well. You stressed me out completely. Just so you can... <laughs> It, did you go guerrilla style, no permits, even when we were out of the streets of New York? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did all the all the um, all the subway stuff where it was in uh, guerrilla style. All the subway stuff. Was we, we actually, it was a lot of fun. We actually, Dave and I didn't really direct those things. In that, we told the actors what to do beforehand, and we had we were on the lookout. The cinematographer, he knew exactly what we wanted. So yes. at that point, the actors were all. All knew it had instructions, but they had to you had they had to work around the cinematographer as well. I mean, there was one moment where our, our cinematographer he got scared um, that we were going to get kicked out, so he literally jumped on a subway that was coming. <laughs> and, and of course, he's not from New York, so and we were in Brooklyn, and he just like disappeared for half an hour, and we're like, "What are we going to do now? We have no idea because we had no way to contact him either. He just kind of like." I'm on the subway because he thought that there were police officers coming toward him and going to keep him out. And he has an expensive camera in his hand. He got scared. <laughs> so, but, but out of that accident, we found one of the, one of the locations. Right, we right. When he, he, uh, he like, took the subway. When he came back, we finally found him after half an hour. He's like, I found the perfect location for one of our scenes. So I, I forget what, I think it was like the one, uh, was, it was another stop. It was the Empire, the Empire, the Empire State Building. Right, where we could see the Empire State Building. Um, yeah. Out, outdoor shot. So he found that and we were like, okay, we're going there next. And we shot a little quick scene over there. Um, go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. That was an unplanned moment. The scene was completely unplanned. So we, we shot there and we found dialogue and we did that as well. Was there a lot of improv dialogue or was it mostly what you wrote? The majority of the script was what we wrote, although within the dialogue, we allowed the actors to improvise because we gave them the facility to get to the moment that they needed. Um, there were scenes that were improvised. There was a scene with the kids where they're going, where they go to the uh, nursery, and that was completely improvised. Um, all of the subway stuff that was also, as we said, we give instructions. They improvised what they had. A lot of the gorilla gorilla stuff that we did in in the subways and the park in, in the parks that was really also somewhat improvised. But the majority of the script was written and whatever what, whatever we could uh, to, to give the actor space, we gave them as well. Yeah. Okay. And well, speaking of these two actors, I mean, no matter how great the rest of this movie is, cinematography, framing, script, I'm gonna get to the framing a little bit because I was very impressed. But this movie does not work if those two guys don't knock it out of the park. So did you know them before? If not, how did you find them? The, the two actors were so wonderful. So we had an amazing uh, casting director over in Colombia, her name is Consuelo Gacha, and she found them both. Um, so she brought Juan Paolo to us, he played Sebastian. Uh, he did an audition for us, and we loved him. We thought it was fantastic. Um, and then Miguel, who plays Adrian, he came a little bit closer to filming. Again, my brother, the moment he saw his audition, he's like, this is the guy. Because we had actually seen a lot of other yeah. actors and we couldn't find the right guy for this role. And we knew like that role was so central to the story. I mean, in many ways, he is the main character. And yeah. we knew we needed someone with a very particular personality that kind of had that, you know, that was like, had, you know, he was a very strong character. And um, in many ways, uh, he and I got very much along. I feel like we we both connected because we have very similar personalities in some way, shape, or form. And I felt like that. I mean, I saw him. I saw his audition tape, and then I saw a, a couple of other stuff that he had done um, for Disney in, in Argentina. And I said, I, I think this is the, he has the personality for Adrian. I, I feel I feel it, and, and I want I, I want him to be in the film, and so. You know, went to the audition. They really liked the audition. They did audition together, and I showed a couple of people, and they said they they work really well. And you know, and I was convinced. Dave was convinced, so we just kind yeah. of that's how Excellent. it happens. And then it, then we were just working on set. We're really just developing the characters of both of them, and I'm getting to make sure that they felt comfortable within the the within the relationship and felt felt comfortable together because it's never easy for two two actors to, to do certain scenes as well. So, 
Well, and, and with that, on independent films, I know from my experience and lots of other fellow filmmakers, we don't have a lot of money, we don't have a lot of time. Did they get a lot of rehearsal time together and or with both of you, or did you have to start immediately and do all that while you were shooting? We had like a week before, she, like, because the thing is with, with Miguel's casting, we had to kind of figure out if we could make the schedule work. That was one of the roadblocks we had in terms of casting him, because it wasn't, a, it wasn't like we wanted him and then you had him. You had to figure out some casting because he was doing some other shoots and he had some other things that he was working on at the same time. So once we kind of, you know, we locked down the schedule, that was a week before shooting. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of met, you know, throughout that week, talked over the script, talked over some scenes, you know, touched, touched a couple of scenes in terms of rehearsing because we knew some of them like we needed to kind of feel comfortable with them, especially the scenes where they really kind of butt heads. We need to kind of find that level that they need to build to. Uh, but then after that, a lot of it really came down to just on set. We, we kind of talked about the things that had already been established in their previous rehearsals and then just kind of built the scene right there. And I mean, in some ways that proved to be the most organic way because even the stuff that we've done before in rehearsed, it was constantly changing. And even though those scenes completely came out very differently um, when we actually went in and did them on the day. And, and I think that was fine too. I think it, uh, we love rehearsals and in a lot of our previous short films, we'd actually kind of sit down and a couple of films, we literally have the actors run the entire movie from start to finish and then we kind of build it that way. But on a bigger film where you're kind of doing things a little bit more disparately and, and quickly, quickly, quickly and with a lot more scope, um, you have to be a little more flexible. And I think that uh, this experience allowed us to realize that we could do that. I was very afraid of making a movie without enough rehearsal time because I love rehearsal but, time. But it was really interesting because also like with other, uh, some of the other cast members that had just met on the spot on that day and they hit it off really well. Like, yeah. you know, for example, um, the yeah. character who, who, who played, the actress who who, who, work, who does the role of, of uh, Stephanie, Mary Angel, you know, she instantly became best friends with Juan Paulo, and she also instantly, you know, was able to hit it off with Miguel, and they worked their scenes together. They were also really strong because they both understood their language, and they both really just got what they had to do. And you know, uh, to this day, it, it, it was really just solid. It, it worked, it flowed, and that that just also made it beautiful yeah. and it made it natural. Wonderful. Um, so I referenced before something I was, now is this your first feature? Yes. Okay. How many shorts have you done before? I think we, so officially <laughs> it's, officially it's five. Officially okay. five. We made a couple of other ones, but like, those are kind of, those are student projects and you know, well, our thesis projects. Are right. So there, there's like five, that, there's five short films right. that we feel really, that we feel good about. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I was very impressed by the composition, by just the framing, and um, I don't want to mess things up. For some of the people watching have seen it, some have not, so I don't want to mess things up. But you know, we start the movie with these two guys in this really blissful place. Like I just so enjoyed the first eight or nine minutes. I was like, oh, this is so great, and I'm like, this is a movie. This is gonna go south. Like I don't <laughs> want to see things get bad, but I know it has to because it's a movie. We've got to have conflict, and the way you shot the two of them in the movie as the relationship runs into trouble uh, really impressed me. And so I'm curious, you know, oftentimes the framing really had a lot to do with what was going on, mostly in the scene and the thematics of the scene. Uh, I tend to find a lot of filmmakers don't think about that. You can just tell watching the movie they don't. And again, was very impressed. I'm just curious the amount of thought you put into that. Did you do a lot of storyboarding? How much was... Were you with the for Take off. For the first zero storyboarding, and I think that's something that we'll do the next time because I think it's really necessary. But I think my brother and I, we had we had a whole week of uh, meetings with our cinematographer and we oh, talked yeah. He came to our apartment and we were literally going scene by scene and he, he was, storyboarded. He, he, he did, did storyboard. Yeah, he storyboarded. Jose Silva was incredibly meticulous with everything that we talked about. Um, and, you know, we talked about... I mean, he literally had a Bible of rules. Yeah. He literally said, these are the rules of the style. And we're going to, like... He, he came to us. He's like, I want to know what the rules are so that we can kind of, like, establish what the story world looks like. And, and we kind of, like... We worked for an entire week, like my brother said, and ironing out what the kind of stylistic choices... So we're going to go handheld for most of the film unless we're in certain locations. Um, you know, we're going to 
we're gonna like tighten the, the camera frame and make it feel more claustrophobic as the relationship starts to fall apart. With lighting, you know, the we'll lighting. Start, we start with red and with, with oranges, and then we go a little bit more blue and a little bit more darker colors. I mean, that was also that, that was much very intentional. I think the for example in, in the bar, I think we, we actually that was kind of an accident because or not an accident. I had said something and and we immediately changed it on on the spot. So we we wanted to do it as well. Um, so for sure, we we definitely talked a lot about framing. We talked about we gave examples of the type of films that we wanted to look at um, yeah. when when we were 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 doing the, the shoot as well. And we also gave examples. And I mean, we talked about a lot about the close up and. Yeah, those were really yeah. I mean, and on Jorge, so with that framework, Jorge was able like we we went into some locations where things kind of changed on the spot, and so Jorge was like, okay, well, this is what we kind of wanted to establish here, this is, and make give us flexibility. And like I said, Jorge has a really amazing eye, and I think a lot of that really was he would come with suggestions to us, and we would just go from there. But yeah, I mean, we really, really kind of we we're very meticulous before with how you were gonna and when and when Jose, when something wasn't working to the style we would always adapt and we would talk and we would try to find a way so that we could we have a meticulous style within yeah i mean a favorite of mine is and there's so many of these in there but uh we start off the, with these warm you know we the movie begins with these warm gorgeous shots of them in bed together and then later in the movie there's this amazing shot where they're flipped upside down and it's very blue and you're just like okay i know exactly you know it's like you don't even have to if i just showed somebody those two shots they'd be like i know exactly where this relationship is here and where this relationship here i don't even know the story so uh, that's cool i was very impressed was yeah. cool. um so where is where are you in terms of the film so it, it's made you're starting to show it like what's going on with the movie right now so we actually do that distribution with TLA releasing. It will be released next year in uh, UK, France, and the US. And the US. And on November nineteenth, it's being released in Colombia in driving driving theaters. Yeah. Oh wow! Awesome. Yeah. yeah the so, COVID. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so the film is thankfully it's it's getting released, and I mean we're doing the festival, so we're basically just trying to. Get the film out as present to people as possible, so we can, you know, see what they think. And yeah. we're working on more scripts and trying to get next projects in. Well, that's what I was going to ask. I mean, first, congrats on the distribution. That's amazing. It's it's so tough. And then, so what is next? So Anything we. About? I mean, we're, we're kind of like working. We're. I mean, COVID obviously changed everyone's mind. We, we were working on a, on a script in Colombia. We were going to shoot with the actress from the film. Um, Natalie, and that was supposed to be planned for a whole Colombian shoot, but COVID has kind of like basically not allowed that to happen as planned. So we're still working on that script, and we're working with with her to find the casting and trying to like find the funds for that. In the meantime, Dave and I are also looking at other. Yeah, we're working on other scripts. Maybe something that we can shoot here over the next year or so, something smaller. Um, you know, we're just kind of keeping our options open. Which place was easier to shoot? U.S., New York, or Columbia? <laughs> every every place had its had its challenges. You know, New York. We knew New York. We know the territory of New York. We, we we've been here. We've lived here for 31, 32 years. So we know New York, and I and we know the city very well. So it was it was just finding the location, finding where we wanted to do, finding what we wanted to show in New York, because we also made a big deal of not showing the big things like the touristy things because we wanted to show something more alive than what people where people live. Um but also in Colombia had its challenges but it also had its rewards because there were people were very friendly, people wanted to be there. The permit situation wasn't as complex. It was really just finding the right places and it was I I, I think both places had rewarding re rewards. Um um, I mean, Colombia was a long shoot, actually, um, so that might obviously influence how complicated or not it was. We had a, we had a bigger crew in Colombia. We had a, a crew of about twenty five people in New York. We had six people on crew. Well, and, wow, and particularly with what you got. Now, how many people did you have to fly back and forth, or you, or was it, was oh. it or okay? Because the majority. The majority of the film is shot in Colombia. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. 
Well, so you cheated really well, then that's <laughs> <laughs> I, that's the reaction we've been getting. Yeah, movie magic. We don't. We we are always kind of tripped up on how much we should say about this, but at the same time, it, and like if you believed it was New York, then if you believed it was. Yeah. New York. Oh, that's wonderful. And you have distribution now, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> say anything. Now, right? so, uh, we, guys, so we had four people who we, we flew back and forth. We had a couple of university friends who came and and, and helped us. Um, in New York and in Colombia, we didn't know anybody and we got lucky. We met a, a wonderful producer and then they brought on the other four producers and we basically, from there, we spent it. Gotcha. Okay. Well, it's a pleasure talking with you guys. I'm personally, uh, genuinely, uh, you know, sometimes when you're in this situation, you have to like fudge a little bit like, oh, I loved your movie and you really didn't, but I really loved it. And I very much look forward to seeing what you guys do next. Thank um, you. Yeah, so thank you so much for being here. And um, yeah, just very much look forward to what you come up with next. And everybody who's watching, if you haven't seen it, uh, please go watch on our schedule nowhere. Thank, thank you. you. Um, it was a real pleasure talking speaking with you. Uh, likewise. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you. you.